I must admit I got pretty excited when video, or video as it's now called, returned to the iOS screen recording scene. In that video I didn't have a chance to do a deep dive so let's do that right now. This is everything you need to know about video. There will likely be many places where you can get it, but I always tend to steer people towards appvalley.vip forward slash app, as it tends to be the easiest and most reliable way to get apps not available on the App Store. On the website, you need to tap on Library and then Applications. Scroll down until you see Video. It's about halfway down and then tap on the Get button. That will start the download of the application, but before you can actually open it, you need to trust the certificate attached to the application. To do this, go to Settings and in the General section, you need to scroll down to Profile and Device Management. The application will be attached to one of the certificates there, so tap on the appropriate one, then the blue words followed by the red trust button. Certificates from outside the App Store often get revoked and stop working. I've done videos explaining all about this, and of course you download applications from outside of the App Store at your own risk. Since most of you will be interested in the iOS 11 screen recording capabilities, the rest of the video will be done using an iPhone 10 on iOS 11. But to answer this particular question, here's an iPod Touch 6th generation running iOS 10.3.3. Let's do a super quick test. Yup, all looks good, and apparently it also works on iOS 9. Whatever screen recording you decide to do, the crucial element is to tick device screen. Also, you can only tick one source for video, so no face cam, I'm afraid. As for output options, unless you're having performance issues, you might as well leave device resolution at 1080p and max FPS rate at 60. We will check on the actual output of video files later. And you'll be delighted to see the orientation setting which allows you to set the recording angle rather than it being set automatically. Okay, onto the audio options. Just like the built-in screen recorder, you have two options. Device audio records just the internal system sounds. No external sounds are picked up from the microphone. The drawback to this recording style is that it mutes the speakers while you're recording, so you can't hear anything during the recording. Okay, let's switch it to an iPhone microphone recording and listen to the difference. Recording through a microphone is a lot more straightforward. You can hear all these system sounds as you're playing games, although it might not play music. Another thing to note is that it resets the volume level when you start a recording, and I recommend having volume at around about four or five blocks to level it with your audio microphone speaking volume and the volume of the game that you're likely playing. So as you can hear in this example, the volumes should be about right so that you can hear my voice more than the sound effects. Now let's do a quick walkthrough recording. With your recording option set in video, tap start in the top right hand corner and then tap done. A message will say video is ready. Now bring up the control center and go to screen mirroring where you will see video. Tap that and the recording will start and make a beep noise to indicate that. Use your device as normal until you are ready to finish. When you are, go to the control center again, tap on screen mirroring and then tap stop mirroring and audio prompt will say this. Recording complete. You can now go to your photo app where you should find the recorded video where you can play it, edit it and upload it to YouTube. Now for some device health and safety pointers. If this message is on screen, that means the AirPlay service for video is still running even if you are not recording and you have exited the app. Make sure to tap the stop button within video to stop the AirPlay service running. Secondly, even after you have stopped screen mirroring, video may be doing some weird things. On the lock screen, for example, it may look like it's playing a strange audio track. To get rid of this, you will need to completely close down the video application through multitasking. If you forget to do any of this, you'll soon find out because video absolutely destroys your battery. 
This is a microphone audio recording of Clash Royale on an iPhone 10 of about 3 minutes. On the surface, everything looks generally good. The image is sharp, there don't appear to be any lost frames, and for a microphone recording, the audio is pretty clear. There's further good news in the file properties too. A recording resolution that matches the maximum resolution of a device screen and a super high frame rate, although you can't fully appreciate it in this video as my video editor is capped at 30 frames a second. Thanks for that Camtasia. Now there are one or two gremlins with this recorder. First of all, when I transferred a system audio recording over to my computer, I lost the audio completely. Probably not a huge issue for most as the built-in screen recorder for internal audio recordings works fine anyway. The bigger problem, however, is the audio sync on microphone audio recordings. The developer stresses that when you end a recording, you should stop screen mirroring first before stopping the video recording session. Despite doing that, you can see and hear on this video the around half second audio miss sync. To better illustrate in my video editor, when I line up the camera recording and screen recording frame by frame, you can see how offset the audio is on the screen recording. In general, there seems to be a compatibility issue with MOV files that VidU creates. When I import the raw files into my video editor, it grinds the whole program down to a snail's pace, and when I play the raw files in a video player on my computer, you get this strange green blurring artifacts and ghosting effect, very similar to the airshow issues from way back when. So it might be back to the classic solution of importing the video screen recording into an editor, making no changes, and then exporting it out again. But that kind of defeats the object, because you can do the same thing with native iOS 11 screen recordings to fix the microphone issue. I've clocked file recording sizes at around 40 meg per minute at the top resolution and 60 frames a second, but of course that could vary from device to device. Previously, VDU had a problem where it would kill the Wi-Fi on your device when you started a recording. I personally haven't encountered this so far, and the developer did do some tweaks to make this work on iOS 11, so maybe that problem has been fixed. This is a straight, full-on screen recorder. It's not restricted by Apple's screen recording API, which means it records apps that might not appreciate it, such as Snapchat. But to be honest, I haven't actually tested that, so it still might not work. If you are using the microphone to record video, you can't use it on other applications such as Skype or FaceTime, because that application would also need to use the microphone. And finally, this app is controlled by the AirPlay server, which the developer can switch on or off at his discretion. So if you suddenly don't see device screen as a recording option in video, the AirPlay server isn't on. And that's almost everything you need to know about video. I say almost because I always miss something out in these videos, or there'll be some wise guy in the comments pointing something out. Anyway, I'm going to post this video to the developer so he can keep an eye on it, maybe answer some of your questions if you post them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and if you want more iOS screen recording content just like this, subscribe to the Video Gadgets channel, let me know what you think of video, enjoy the rest of your tech day, bye for now. Also because of time restraints, I've stopped doing these little bits after the outros, was anybody watching them anyway?